That's fun. Um, okay, it was F minor. I tried to F, putting the A major third in there, and now, uh uh-uh. F minor, B flat, uh, A flat, nice. Now, I play, there's various ways, as we've mentioned, to play your chords, various what they call inversions all over the neck. Just various ways to string those notes together, you know? Do you want to play a, a great big F minor with all six strings? No. You know, you'd, you'd step all over everybody. So a cool way I found to play minors, you know the D seventh shape, the, the good, you know, first position folky chord down here. I've got my uh, second finger on the second fret of the G string, my first finger on the first fret of the B string, and my third finger on the second fret of the high E. D seventh, right? We'll just take that, move everybody in one string. So now my second finger is on the second fret of the D string, my first finger is on the first fret of the G string, and my third finger is on the second fret of the B string. And through trial and error, I have figured out that the note you're playing on the B string with your third finger, that's the root of the chord. So with this one here, it's a C sharp minor. Now, you might well ask, why is it a C sharp minor? It's a C sharp minor because the minor third of C sharp is E. There's your E note. The fifth of C sharp is G sharp. First fret of the G string. Half step up from G is D sharp. G sharp. One fret up. So that's a C sharp minor because you're playing a C sharp note on the B string. For us to get an F minor then, we want to play an F note on the B string, that same D seventh shape, and there's our F minor chord. Now, sometimes like if you're playing acoustic guitar and you're playing by yourself, you can use that minor, even though it doesn't really have a bass note in it. If you're playing it in E, so that the E note on the fifth fret of the B string, you know it's an E minor. Then you can play your open, or if you're playing it on the 10th fret, A minor. You can get the open string there. Generally, this is a chord you use within a, within a band context, within a, a shape that you use within an ensemble context like this here. Okay, so I, I got my F minor. We know how to play. A B flat. I'm not going to put a third in either one of the B flat or the A flat. I'm not going to play the D, the major third of the B flat, or the C, the major third of the A flat chord, because I just want them to be the sound of the chord. Okay? So we got the F minor. Again, I don't want to get in the piano player's way, because he's the main guy. I'm playing rhythm here. I'm backing him up. So one, two, three, four. And I go bop, bop, bop. Bop, 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 bop. I'm playing three notes in all three of those chords. I'm playing the notes we talked about for the F minor, okay? I'm playing the eighth fret of the D string with my third finger and the sixth fret of both the B and the high E with my first finger. I'm not playing the G string at all. So I'm picking the D string with my thumb and I'm using my second and third finger nails to pluck the the two high notes. So we got. Now, another little trick when you're playing rhythm, do you hit the chord and let it sustain? Do you strum the chord? Janga, 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 janga. Here, I hit the first one, I do a, a, a triplet, one, two, three. 
And then I go, bah! just one quick hit on that B flat chord. But I let the A flat sustain. I almost can't tell you why I do that. It's just experience. It's just, I want to play. Also, letting the A flat sustain, it's a release. Even though it's a very short phrase. Four, one, two, two, three, four, one, two. That little bit of release, relaxation on the A flat chord, to me, makes it fit in more with the arrangement that's going on. So that's the deal there. Then on the um, ascending part, the D flat, E flat, F minor, I went back to my old friends, the the eighth notes. It's got the stop. And the the D flat comes pretty much right in on one. One, two, three, four. Then there's a little anticipation on the E flat. And there's an anticipation on the F minor, and it's just you strike it and you release it. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, and we're back to the other part. Boom, da, 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 bam, bam. Now you hear? One, two, Three. I, I always do that kind of stuff when I play. It doesn't always work. You know, sometimes people might say to me, man, do you have to do that counting time thing in between? And I'll happily take it out for somebody if they want to, but I like it. I like that kind of stuff. It sounds cool. So that's it. That, that's the way to play that song. And to tell you the truth, in this context, in this setting of this, this type of uh, uh, band, little outfit, I wouldn't put another rhythm part on it. That's it. To me, this, this you want to keep, you want to keep space in a thing like this. This type of music, you might call it light jazz, you know. You want to keep some space in there. Because uh, rhythmically, I, it, I think it's more effective to keep the space. So I won't put another rhythm part on this one. 